Hi everyone, Ravi this side. Welcome to Engineering Adda. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about the roadmap of Spring Boot. As you know that Spring Boot is a very popular Java framework and it is used in the development of the web application. So if you want to acquire the knowledge of Spring Boot, then what are the roadmaps and what are the steps you need to follow? That is what we are going to discuss in this video. So let's get started for that and I have created couple of slides where I have listed out the steps that you need to follow in order to acquire the knowledge of Spring Boot. So let's get started for that. Let me try to go to the next slide and here are the steps. So the very first step you need to learn in order to learn the Spring Boot is learn the core Java. Okay. So before diving into the Spring Boot ensure you have a solid understanding of the Java including the object oriented programming data structures and Java 8 features like Lambda and the stream APIs. So make sure that you are having a basic understanding of the core Java. And after that, make sure that you have a basic understanding of the Java 8 features like Lambda, stream, functional interface. So if you have the knowledge of those things, then it, it will be very easy for you to write the code in the Spring Boot. Okay. So this is the first step. The second one is Java Spring Fundamentals. So you need to be familiarized uh, with the core concept of the Spring Framework such as dependency injection, inversion of control, Spring containers and many more basic fundamentals concept of the Spring Boot. Okay. Now if you don't know uh, from where to learn there is a video on my channel you can go and watch it out about these things. Okay, now get started with the Spring Boot. So if you want to uh, like have now we are assuming that you have the knowledge of core Java and you know the basic of Spring Boot. Now what is the next step you have to do is you have to start developing the Spring Boot application and developing couple of CRUD APIs then only you will acquire the knowledge of Spring Boot. Okay, so get started with the Spring Boot. Start with the basic of Spring Boot. You can use the Spring Initializer. So Spring Initializer is a kind of tool or you can say the website from where you can generate simple Spring Boot project. And then you can uh, download that project or you can open that project in a, like IDE, like IntelliJ, Eclipse. There are couple of ideas where you can open it out and then you can look into the code structure of how the Spring Boot project is looking like. If, if you are going to uh, create the Spring Boot project then there are uh, the other fields like you, you have to include the starter dependency. So what is the starter dependency? Those things also you need to explore. So the very first uh, step with the development of a Spring Boot application is try to create a simple Spring Boot application and try to look into the code structure of the Spring Boot application, how it is looking like. Okay, so that is the first thing. Uh, learn how to create a basic Spring Boot application with the RESTful web services. So once you, you are able to create the Spring Boot application, you, uh, you are going through the code structure of the Spring Boot application, uh, folder structure of the Spring Boot applications. Now you are aware about the main test and the like I would say application, sorry, resource folders. So if you are aware about the resource folders and others folder structures as well as the external dependencies. So now you have the understanding of the Spring Boot project, how it is looking like. The next step is to create the basic CRUD APIs in this Spring Boot application. So let me try to go to the next slide and try to tell you uh, the other steps. Okay. So the other steps are is uh, Spring Boot starters. So if you are working with the Spring Boot, you must be very much aware about the Spring Boot starters. So what is the Spring Boot starters? These are the starter dependency that provides you the uh, couple of features. So let's say you want to develop a Spring Boot web application. Then there is a starter dependency that is a Spring Starter Web 
you need to include that starter dependency in your Spring Boot application so that your application will look like a web application. This is starter dependency is coming with the uh, embedded server like Tomcat or Jetty where you can run your application on. So you need to be very much clear about the what is the starter dependencies, what is the Spring Boot starters. So let me try to read out for you. Understand the Spring Boot starter and how they simplify project configuration by providing pre-configured templates. So make sure uh, you have the understanding of Spring Boot starter. Soak into the Spring Boot starters and look into the Spring Boot starter what all they are. Okay. Now the next step that you can follow is working with data. So whenever you are going to develop any application, the key feature of that application would be the data. So how our application is interacting with the data, that is the main thing of an application. So you need to look into how Spring Boot uh, helps in interacting with the database. Okay. So learn how to work with the data in Spring Boot, including setting up the database connections, using Spring Data, JPA or JDBC and performing the basic CRUD operations. So once uh, you have created the applications, then now you have to learn how to connect with the database. And then next thing what you have to do is you can develop the basic RESTful APIs or basic CRUD operations APIs that I would say. So the next step that you can follow is Spring Boot web application. So explore build, building web application with the Spring Boot using Spring MVC for traditional web application. So there is a like way once you have developed the application let's say you are developing the web application either you can use the uh, traditional web application way of developing the web application which is spring mvc and if you want to develop a reactive web application then you can go for the spring web plugs okay so you have to learn about the how how we can develop a web application in spring boot so there is a two way a spring mvc and a spring web plugs now let me try to go to the next slide and let's say you have developed the Spring Boot application. Now you have to develop those APIs. So RESTful web services, how you can develop that you need to look into. So dive into creating a RESTful web services with the Spring Boot. Learn about the request mapping. Learn about the, uh, I would say, path variables, git mapping, post mapping, controllers, handling HTTP requests and the responses, handling exceptions. So everything you have to uh, look into so if you are not aware how to develop the rest services in the spring boot i have a lot of uh, videos on my channel where i have used uh, different databases like mongodb uh, elasticsearch mysql postgresql with all of those databases i have created the basic crud operations in the spring boot and basic crud apis i would say i have created there so you can look into those things now the next thing is uh, Spring Boot security. So if you are making uh, your application to a production level, then you should be handling the security things in your application, right? So you should be aware about the Spring Boot security, how the Spring Boot security is working like and how it help us in authentication and authorizations, how you can implement the Spring Boot security and JWT token authorization and authentication how you can do those things you have to look into those now the next thing is spring boot data sources so spring boot uh, allow us to interact with the different data sources either it can be uh, i would say uh, sql database schema uh, list databases sql databases rdbms databases so there are so many data sources that spring allow to work with it can be MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL. If you are going for the non-SQL databases like MongoDB, Elasticsearch. So there are uh, so many databases that Spring Boot is comfortable with. You can look into those things. Now let me try to go to the next slide and coming to the testing. So let's say you have developed your applications. Uh, you have created the basic CRUD operations. You know how to interact with the database. Now the next part is how you will do the testing in your application. So you have to look into the testing in Spring Boot, how to do the testing. So it, if Spring Boot provides so much testing tools like JUnit, Mockito, 
I have also a video on my channel where I have told you about how to uh, write the unit test cases, how to write the integration test, and I have discussed about the JUnit and Mokito as well. So you can look into those things as well. Now the next uh, thing that you need to uh, have a basic, or I would say uh, you should be have a grip on this understanding, which is Spring Boot Actuator. So how is Spring Boot Actuator make your life easier? How it provides the production ready features? Those things you need to look. Okay. Now the next thing is, is Spring Boot Profiles. So let's say you have developed your application, but the thing is you need to promote your application to uh, uh, the next or higher environments like testing or production. How you can manage those things? So there come the picture of Spring Profiles. You need to look into those things as well. Now build some real world projects. So now you have the basic understanding how the Spring Boot application is working like, uh, what are the features that you need to look into and then you should start developing the real world projects. Apply your knowledge and build some real world project like uh, e-commerce websites or blogging platforms or task management system. So you can do, uh, do those things. Now in the today market, there is a term called microservices which is very much popular and Spring Boot help us in developing the microservices in a very easy way. So you need to go through the concept of microservices and how Spring Boot can help us in developing the microservices. That would be a very much added advantage uh, when you are learning the Spring Boot. So explore microservices architecture using Spring Boot, learn how to create, configure and manage microservices and use Spring Cloud for the service discovery and the communication. There is a playlist on my channel where I have uh, discussed about how to create the microservices in Spring Boot and I've created a couple of different microservices which are interacting with each other and which are using uh, different databases as well. So you can go and watch out this playlist. It will uh, helpful for you. Now the next thing is continuous integration and deployment. How you can do uh, the continuous integration and how you can deploy your code that the next thing that you need to learn in order to scale your application. So you have developed your application. Now you need to uh, move your application to the cloud and you want to scale it out. So you need to learn for this continuous integration and deployment thing. Uh, I have covered a couple of uh, Jenkins related videos where I have discussed about how to build uh, the Jenkins pipeline, how to do a continuous integration for the deployment. As of now, I have uh, videos uh, how to deploy the things using the Docker and Kubernetes. So you can go and watch it out as well. Now the next thing is uh, Spring Boot best practices. Study best practices for the coding, project organization and performance optimization in Spring Boot. So always uh, you have to look for the new and the best practices of our application development. So similar goes with the Spring Boot as well. So you need to look for the uh, new tools and performance optimization and how you can write your code in a very optimized way so that you can improve the performances of your application. So you need to look into those details as well. And if you want to, uh, like you have the, as uh, till now you must have gained the basic and I would say uh, the thorough understanding of uh, Spring Boot, how the Spring Boot is working and how to do the development with the Spring Boot. If you want to go ahead, you can go to the advanced topics. You can explore the advanced topics like how the Spring Boot is uh, working with the RabbitMQ or how the Spring Boot is working with the Kafka. Those things also you can look into. I have uh, the videos on my channel where I have uh, the crash course on the RabbitMQ and Kafka with the Spring Boot. You can look into those things as well. Now, uh, one suggestion I have is to stay updated. So keep up with the latest updates and the features in the Spring Boot ecosystem by following the Spring Boot official documentation, blog post and community discussions. And you can also watch my videos. I also brings up the new features that Spring Boot release have. Okay, so you can uh, keep learning about the Spring Boot new features, new releases, and uh, that's all. So this is the, I would say, the roadmap to learn the development with the Spring Boot.
this is about the video guys if you like the video please hit the like button and please subscribe the channel for more such content thanks